Hey guys, King of Charmers here. So I have you a data sheet thanks to YTX Pikachu. I put his link, his Twitter link below. He provides these great date spreadsheets on data, and data can really help you build your teams in either Open Ultra or Ultra Premier. For this one, we have Ultra Premier. So here are the most common Pokemon and the most common lineups and leads in ultra premiere as of right now from submitted data and based on like what you see you'll probably see a lot of teams that are very very popular that's because they are for this video we will be analyzing the five most common lineups i don't really go by like five overall leads yes that's important as well as the right however as statistically yes seeing more swamper than venusaur does matter however the statistic because it's a blind format like i'm not going to analyze the whole like okay the overall percentage or the elo percentages again because it's blind there's no real way of telling what you're going to face for example the 22,000s, i can see the same number one team that you see in the most common lineup as in the 2500 you can see the same thing again because it's blind usually people say that there are different metas every 100 elo that's not necessarily true because if there was different metas then it wouldn't be blind like i said there would be a specific like everyone at every 100 elo there would be a specific set of rules because you can still see anything or any of these combinations in further elo percentages then yes but as you see here these are the most common teams again i'm going to focus on the more important data because even if you are going to see swamper more than anybody else like swamper it's been out forever so you probably have a good gauge that swamper is going to be out all right so the fifth most common team number five is toxicoke lapras and snorlax I'm assuming that Snorlax is your safe switch. Lapras can be a safe switch as well, depending on like what your your opponent's lead is and depending on how you want to play it. But either way, this is kind of like I say like a double safe switch works really well. You know, Toxic Rogue does have the ability to be a level 40 if you have a perfect one. However, it can also be at level 50. So it's kind of hard to tell because a perfect one can max out at 40, 24, 88, as you see here. Or a level 50, which can go at 46.5. So you can be facing an XL Toxicroak, and you probably will never know. The CPs are super close. Anyways, it doesn't really... I don't really... It might flip the matchups, etc. However, Toxicroak generally, in general, is a pretty... It's not super thick. So that's why you have two tanks covering it, because of that. It's also really good because it has Mud Bomb and Sludge Bomb. Mud Bomb only costs 35 energy. It's a great bait move and has great coverage. Sludge Bomb does heavy damage if lands, so... That's Toxic Rogue. Again, Lapras and Storlax. I would be. This team is very tricky as well because Lapras can also be rocking Ice Beam and Storlax could be rocking Earthquake. Most Snorlax are rocking Body Slam Superpower, so we're just going to assume the most powerful movesets for this analysis. As you see here, I already ran the team, so the team is great across the board, also very consistent. This team will do a ton of damage and force a lot of pressure on you. Not a surprise. I've seen the Toxic Rogue combination, Toxic Rogue Snorlax. I've seen that combination core a lot, and it's really good. And it's no surprise why. Now, the only thing about this team, as you see here, it does very well against the meta, with the exception of Swamper. So there's a way you like you can still beat Swamper. Like all three of these Pokemon still can generally beat Swamper. However, Swamper, well, Swamper because it's so fast, has strong matchups against all three of these. Very very powerful. And if they're rocking Earthquake, a Earthquake will eat a Toxic Rogue in one shot. And it'll do heavy damage to a Lapras and a Snorlax as well. So Swamper, you should be careful. Gallade's also dangerous. The confusion users in this meta, just because Gallade, like Toxicroak doesn't... If you've ever seen a Toxicroak hit, but get hit by a Confusion Great League, it's not that much different in Ultra League. It will get wiped, it gets wiped out pretty fast. So just be careful of it. That's why Toxicroak is in the lead, because if you win a lead against Toxicroak, you're gonna likely have to pivot out more with Toxicroak than you would with Lapras or Snorlax. As you see here, the team's potential threats are, as I mentioned, Confusion Users, Swampers, and I don't know why Jolt- Well, I can see Rapidash just because, well, I can see why, but like, Fire-types as well, but Fire-types aren't really that much of a threat because you can still serve it down with Lapras. Toxic Crook is also able to Mud Bomb down Fire-types, so they're not too much of a threat. However, the two you will see the most, for sure, is going to be Swamper and Gallade. Toxic Crook will generally beat the other fighters as well as Venusaur. However, you should be careful of Venusaur because Venusaur can double friendly plant 
a Toxic Rift to Death, just because it does so much damage. So be very mindful that yes, you win certain matchups against certain things, but you should be careful at what you should be a, be a little careful because, like I mentioned, it's still dangerous. So still a very powerful team. If you lose the lead with Toxic Rope, say switches to Snorlax or to Lapras, depending on like what you see in the lead. Team number four features Snorlax, Kingdra, and Togekiss. Snorlax is a fantastic lead, especially because. If you don't see a Machamp, it's a great generalist to constant board as long as you don't see a fighter. So for Snorlax, as you see here, Snorlax, Kingdra is your safe switch, Togekiss is your closer. Kingdra is there for one reason, to wipe out all of those Obstagoons, all of those dragons, and all of those fighters. Togekiss is actually a pretty dang good pick right now because Kingdra and dragons are so popular in the back. As you see here, this team doesn't really have a lot of bulk. Well, it set doesn't have a lot of bulk for the reason that you have Togekiss in it, but... In all honesty, like Snorlax and Kingdra, yes, they don't have a ton of bulk, but they can tank a little bit of damage, especially if you get the debuff on Kingdra. The simple thing is if you have a Kingdra on any team, Kingdra save switch, and then you go to town. That's basically what it is. And if you lose the lead, if you get the debuff, which is a 50% chance of coin flip, then that means you can possibly win back switch. If you're lucky enough, you can win back switch consistently in one set. That's why Kingdra save switch is so popular right now. As you see here, this team basically features a it beats a lot of good picks. Again, Toxic Rope, I mean Togekiss in the back is very, very powerful. So if you go down here, if you look at the score, there's actually the only thing that you really have to worry about is kind of just Toxic Rook, honestly. Like there is just because with Toxic Rook, the thing about Toxic Rook, Toxic Rook is not that it's actually not that squishy to be honest, because it's squishy, but like it can live a few shots from Togekiss. It's just because of the Sludge Bomb, to be honest with you. This team is actually really solid, just because with Snorlax, you could. There's a lot of things you could do. If you lose the lead with Snorlax, again you safe switch it to Kingdra, and then you try to realign, win back switch, or do something fancy. Togekiss with two shields is a monster, or Togekiss can farm down a lot of things, as long as you don't see Electric types or you see Ice types, which you can't see in the back as well. However, because Kingdra has Ancient Power and Flamethrower, you could possibly take out a few things in the back. Again, Ampharos, I would say, is your worst... I would say Ampharos is your worst nightmare because Ampharos with Focus Blast can take out Snorlax and Ampharos does... is able to Thunder Punch its way through Kingdra and Togekiss. It's very dangerous, so... Say Ampharos is your biggest threat. However, this team does very, very well. So, I would... They, I've seen this team a lot and I think it's really... I think it's good, but, like, again, like, the basis of this team is sn thick lead, very thick lead, avoid the... avoid fighter, avoid big fighter, uh, switch switch into Kingdra, and Togekiss is for all those double dragon teams. Pretty easy to use, not too hard to get either for all of these three Pokemon. Alright, team number three is Excavalier, Swampert, and Venusaur. This is a very, very weird team. Just because the, the reason why I think I'm a little weirded out by it is Excavalier is a great mon, but you kind of die to fire. I'm get like just on first glance, this team's whole this team's holistically weak to fire. If you see fire, you say switch into Swampert. You lose Swampert, you essentially die. It's that simple. That's why it's kind of confusing how this team kind of works. Especially because in a lot of instances for I would say Drill Run and like, unless you have sludge, unless you sludge bomb, you can't really take out the back row. As you see here, not a ton of coverage, not a lot of bulk. This team is built to do a ton of damage in a short amount of time. Now, you could probably sacrifice Excavalier, but you don't want an Excavalier to die to a loaded Talonflame or even a Charizard. You say switch into Swampert and you pray you could take back switch. That's basically the play, I'm guessing, from just the way this team is put out. As you see here, like I mentioned before, things will light you on fire. But other than that, if you don't encounter it, this team actually does really, really well against a lot of picks. None of the this whole team, Machamp is resisted. How Excalibur doesn't do bad against Machamp or Swampert per se, just because it is able to resist. It doesn't. It's not weak to steel because it does fighting does neutral damage. When you have bug, bug resist steel. I mean, bug resist fighting steel. Re is weak to fighting and yeah you basically know what happens so as you see here fighters can give you a little bit of hard time i can see surf edge giving you a little hard time because if it does get the night slash boost it sucks and also surf edge can also be rocking leaf blade leaf blade will you to swamper to the next dimension if it does hit galade isn't necessarily a 
bad pick for this team. However, Gallade will it actually Gallade can put a ton of pressure on you again because of the same reason with Surfetch. It has Leaf Blade. Gallade with Leaf Blade sucks, and Gallade's confusions really hurt Venusaur. Yes, you can kill Gallade. However, it's still really rough if you see one in the back. You have to be able to one shot it with, not really one shot it per se, but you have to be able to kill it with a charge move or half shield down because that's how much damage it does. As you see here, you have a ton of potential threats. This team is real. The reason why this second co most common team kind of interests me, I think this team is really, like, I. it's kind of weird because I think this team is really designed to beat the double dragon team, kind of, but not really because, like, yeah, you beat Excavalier with the lead, but if they swap a Kingdra onto you, you swap in Venusaur, and then Swampert doesn't have a great matchup against Dragonite so it's kind of like I said this team kind of weirded me out even though it's the second most popular team it's kind of I don't really recommend it so yeah yeah I don't really recommend it just because Talonflame will as you see here Talonflame wrecks your soul Charizard will wreck your soul as well Excavalier doesn't do necessarily well against Char Dragonite either like for example if you get Dragonite or a Togekiss lead for example they do resist your counter so you, especially Togekiss yeah it's very weird how Excavalier works in this current meta you do resist galleys can you do resist confusion you do resist confusion you do resist which call what's the other typing i'm looking at here since you're a buck you do resist grass types but unless you if you don't catch a grass lead it kind of sucks and if you catch a roserade as you see here weather ball can threaten you really hard so this team has a lot of holes so that's why i'm a little confused of why it's there so team number two features dragonite empoleon and gengar in this sense, Gengar is your safe switch. Empoleon can also be kind of a safe If you realize that it's the double dragon team, you could probably switch into Empoleon, predicting that there is going to be a dragon in the back. Well, that's very rare. But in all most situations, Gengar is probably going to be your safe switch. Now, I actually, I think one of my friends actually runs this team. I forgot who it was. But anyways, this team is very, very powerful. And it's really strong, but here's why. You don't have a lot of bulk. It also doesn't cover a lot of things. This team basically, this team's basic goal is to bully its way through everything. So, I'm assuming, well, I think it's a Shadow Dragonite. So, Shadow Dragonite and then Empoleon Gengar. I think it's a Shadow Dragonite because Shadow Dragonite works better. But again, even in the same, like, same species, it's very, it, it sacrifices bulk for just an extreme amount of damage. Empoleon could do really well in the meta because it does stop the charmers as well as as i mentioned dragon breath users shadow dragonite's really powerful because if you get if you it wins against a lot of elemental leads like swamper venusaur charizard etc well it wins it convincing or gives you a more comfortable spot you can still lose against something like dragon breath dragonite i mean dragon the charizard but it just really depends and if you get the mirror with shadow dragonite whoever wins cmp wins that match so Still a very powerful lead, still very strong. Again, Gengar will be your switch, but this team is basically fire on all cylinders. It's high, heavy, high damage output with not a lot of bulk. So if you get something per se like a Lapras or something in that, or a bulky core, it might give you a little bit of trouble just because your Pokemon will die very fast. As you see here, this team has a maraud of weaknesses. Magnezone being one of them because Magnezone can essentially run over this team or force shields, put heavy pressure on you. Electro, but it's really good for one specific reason. As you see, for all your weaknesses, those aren't very common. Probably your biggest common is probably getting Magazone and Berserker. Yes, you could see Excavalier, but even then, you can threaten Excavalier with Hurricane. And if you did a Hurricane through, you will KO Excavalier. So your weaknesses are kind of not that common. Keyword is kind of. You can still see Magazones, and you could for sure still see Excavalier. You're still gonna see Excavaliers. I've seen them before too, but. Just really depends on what you face. Again, this team is very pressure heavy. Pressure, pressure, pressure. You will try to kill your opponent. Well, everyone tries to kill their opponent. But this team especially, you will try to run everything over. Even Magnezone. So if you do get the Magnezone, you could say switch in a Gengar. Or you can try to push away through Dragonite. It's really up to you. Gengar, again, is probably going to be your main safe switch, safe switch. Unless you recognize that it is the Dragon Red team with Kingo safe switch. Then you can probably try to play some fancy mirror team or something like that. But for the most part... Gengar will be your go-to switch for most of the time. The reason why Gengar is kind of dangerous as a safe switch, one, it's not that bulky, two, if they switch Gallade into you, you're kind of screwed, just because it can confusion you down. Yes, you'll do, you could still do heavy damage though with Gengar, so it's really up to you. 
Again, very powerful team, but very, very pressure heavy. Make sure you have a lot of confidence before you use this team. Alright, and now the most common team is a double dragon team, which I'm not really surprised. Double dragon has been very prominent since, I would say, forever just because of Kingdra's Octazooka. That's pretty much it. You lose lead, you switch to Kingdra, you debuff. And you also pray that they don't have a charmer. That's basically it. Lapras can also give this team a little bit of a hard time just because Lapras' ice does do neutral damage against Kingdra and it can essentially farm your Shadow Dragonite to death with just straight ice stars. So very dangerous, very good team if, as long as, like I said, as long as you don't see a Charmer. If you don't see a Charmer, you can play out of a lot of situations with this team, especially if you get the debuff with Kingdra. As you see, on paper, this thing just looks really bad. However, because of how powerful Dragon Breath is, and like I said, because of the Octazooka safe switch potential, and Empoleon does a ton of damage if it's a Hydro Cannon you, and Shadow Dragonite is just a beast. If it doesn't get iced down, that's why this team is so consistent. This team literally sacrifices every other portion of what you use for the fact that is extreme. It does a heavy amount of damage in a short, in a very short amount of time. Like I mentioned, if you get the debuff with Kingdra, you can still. There's still a lot of play, but like I said, if you see a Charmer, it's pretty bad. But as you see here, Empoleon does lose against things like Swampert. Well, you can double shield against Swampert and win Switch. However, your opponent has a Charmer in the back and they take out your Empoleon, you're kind of dead. As you see here. The basis of it is basically what I mentioned before with team number four. Switch to Kingdra and then Octazooka. Or Outrage through Shields. Either one. Anyways, as you see here, Magnezone also gives you a little bit of problem because Magnezone can rev up and nuke you. But as far as as far as there's a lot of leads you can lose, but if you like I said, if you bring Kingdra, you can take back switch as long as you can outrage or if you Octazooka debuff. There's play. As you see here, this team has a stupid high threat score. Very high threat score. However, like I mentioned before, it sacrifices every portion of logic. Well, not really logic, but it sacrifices a lot of... Takes advantage of the patterns in the game. Like I said, if you... Like, as long as you don't have a Charmer in the back. And this team, Double Dragon, is the sole reason why you see so many people using Charmers in the back. Charmers in the back generally isn't a great idea back in the day just because of Venusaur. Venusaur does resist and the po D Venusaur does resist charm and with the exist with Toxicroak being an XL now Sludge Bomb will do heavy damage or OKO most of the time against Charmers. So Double Dragon is very very powerful. Like I said, sacrifices pretty much every source of weakness for the fact that you could do a heavy amount of damage. There are win cons as long as you could Dragon Breath your way through victory. This team, I, I I believe this team was created by a very popular content creator, but uh, the concept of Double Dragon, that's basically how it works. Kingdra wins safe switch back, Dragonite does heavy damage, and that's GG's. Not too hard to use, pretty much like team number four with just the no no Empoleon and you don't have a Shadow Dragonite. Duh, but that's the reason why, because Kingdra does so well. And that's it, you guys. Again, these top teams have a lot... Like, these top teams, they're really powerful. However, every team has a weakness, of course, because this is a blind format. So expect to see a lot of these teams running rampant. I've already caught a lot of these teams pretty much like that all... Like, I've caught a lot of them. But you can also see a lot of different picks, like XL picks, Umbreon XL, XLs... Yeah. Even though these are the most popular teams... There's still a lot of other Pokemon, mainly the XL variants, that are very powerful. If you notice, Togekiss in the back is, or like Charmer in the back in general, is still really good because it also catches dragons as well as dark types. So XL Umbreon, XL Mandibuzz get essentially destroyed by Charmers. So it's not a bad idea to have a Charmer in the back nowadays. Charmers also do very well against things like V Swampert and Swampert, Fighters in the back. And you can charm things that the two shield charmer strat can still be very viable as long as you don't see Venusaur. And if you do see Venusaur, you still have Flamethrower to take out Venusaur. So as you see here, these are the top picks. It's not a surprise to see a lot of the starter Pokemon still very viable. Mainly the top four like you see over here because they do so much damage. They do a lot of damage and it's really good to see that these Pokemon are still viable. As annoying as Swampert is... The fact that it's only 10k dust and it's a relatively cheap mon and low barrier to entry, the fact that it's so strong, yeah, like I said, it's annoying, but like it's kind of good that Pokemon that don't cost a lot of Stardust, like 
still do very well against in Ultra Premier. But Ultra Premier is chaos. My basic advice to you is right now, because Ultra Premier is so chaotic because of XL Pokemon, if you have something that's working for you, stick with that team and just keep using it. If you 4-1 or 5-0 with something, use it. The reason why I say 4-1 or 5-0 is because if you 4-1 or 5-0 two or three times, you might have a good grasp of that team. And if you're if you're losing lead and coming back from winning leads or coming back from losing leads, then definitely that team seems to be working for you. I always tell everyone to use what's comfortable for you, not what's popular. Because if you use what's popular, everyone's just going to one, counter you. And number two, you're not used to using that team anyways. Use the Pokemon that you are comfortable with. Use the Pokemon you can afford. And again, Pokemon that aren't necessarily XL can still be viable in Ultra Premier. If you guys enjoyed the video, I'll be doing more content on this as patterns do come out. Because it's good to see patterns so that you can make strategies against them. Or you're like, oh, I like that team. And you can use the team yourself. Because these teams are used a lot for good reason. They're really good. Good luck on your Go Battle League sets. And I will see you guys on the next video. Also, please like and subscribe if you found it already. I always forget to say that. But please, like and subscribe. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Have a great day.